Uh, Laura Ingram joins us from our nation's capital. Good morning to you, Laura. Hey, Laura. Hey, guys. I was watching that um, that rally live, and I'm watching. I'm thinking, oh no, what if what if that beautiful little boy says, "Mommy and Daddy," and looks really scared and like, get me. That was risky, but it, it worked out. It, it did. worked out perfectly. Trump out. He's still getting big crowds. Uh, the momentum uh, after Friday, it looked like everything right. was blowing up, but after the debate. I know the polls look bad. There is a double digit deficit, according to the Wall Street Journal. Right. But after the debate, Laura, what do you think changes? Well, I just think Republicans uh, on Capitol Hill, I mean, the big headline in the Washington Post today is not about Trump's you know, strong debate performance or the right. fact that thousands of people turn out for a rally. The headline in the Washington Post is uh, that Paul Ryan breaks ranks with Trump. And after, I don't know, two years that we've heard Republicans complain that, oh, we need the executive branch to get anything done, and don't, don't complain to us about the executive amnesty sure. or funding Planned Parenthood. We need the executive branch. We need the executive branch. They finally have someone who is within still striking distance, mm -hmm. and they decide a month before the election, you know, we're, not, we're just not going to support them. And, and yet vote for us down ticket. Now, that is... That perhaps is one of the most idiotic strategies it's I have ever lose, heard from lose. a Republican Party. It's crazy. No, they are going to further distance themselves from the Trump voters. And last time I checked, almost 15 million primary voters turned right. out for Donald Trump. Why is 15 it important? Million. What's your message then? Why is it important for voters to go to the polls? Because there are some voters that are watching that are disappointed with both candidates. So why is it important? Well, I, under I understand that. But, but we live in reality. We don't live in a world where suddenly this angelic figure is going to float down from heaven and be the Republican nominee. Right. We have Donald Trump, who's connected with the voters on the issues of globalization, immigration, health care reform, education policy, and tax policy, and in rebuilding our military, which must be done. Sure. We, we, we people go out there as Republicans and say, you know, I'm just going to vote down ticket. Then you better be prepared for the following things to happen. Mass amnesty given to illegal immigrants, a sovereignty and independence killing trans-Pacific partnership, and years of no economic growth. If right. that's what you think is going to get us to the promised mm -hmm. land politically, then go ahead and just vote sure. down ticket. But I'm living in the real world, and I'm going to fight to the last second on the last day uh, of this campaign to bring that message to the American people. Laura, if the Republican establishment abandons Trump one month before the yep. election, and something bad happens, like he loses, uh, bad to him and bad to the Republicans ultimately, the narrative's going to be, they stabbed him in the back. How do there is Repu no Republican, yeah. Right. There how do, no Republican how does the Republican Party, Party recover? They're not going to. They're going to they're splinter. Uh, you're absolutely right. And what, it is, what they've been saying is Donald Trump is, re is blowing up the Republican Party. And I say that is a false narrative. The people who are, who are blowing up the Republican Party are the Kelly Ayotts, the Paul Ryans, all these other people who've, who run to their friends in the press after Donald Trump has a strong debate performance. They run to their friends in the press and say, oh, let me tell you what's happening behind closed doors. There are significant Republicans who are disgusted by Trump and they're not going to vote for him. Now, that's what the Democrats never do. They never break ranks with their nominee. They never dump on their nominee in public to the media. Instead, they go to the press and say, our candidate has the winning message. She's a strong woman, and right. she's a fighter, and she's going to fight for Americans. So well, well, I think Paul Ryan and all these guys, and I like Paul Ryan, by the way, personally. I think he's a lovely mm -hmm. individual. I love him as a person. So this is not personal. This is political strategy. And this, if, if you want to just have theories about how Jack Kemp, is, is, his policies are great, and we need to go back to that, that, that's fine. Go to a think tank and write articles all day long. But, <laughs> but if you're working in politics, politics mm. is about winning. Here's, if you don't win, you cease to be a, a party that is relevant in America Laura, today. Laura, here's the question this morning. We're reading through all the WikiLeaks emails, the latest ones that were released yesterday. Who is Hillary Clinton? She's, she's out on the campaign trail saying we need to let all this, these Syrian refugees in, 65,000 right. of them. But right. when you read her emails from just three years ago, her conversations with Podesta, and her conversations at these big banks, these transcripts have been released. She said in, in, uh, just three years ago that we can't vet this, these Syrian refugees. But if you hear her now, she has a different message. But she says, how are we going to know if all these Syrian refugees that are leaving Syria, they're going into Jordan, how are the Jordanians going to really know if they're terrorists or not? We don't know who, who these people are. 
Yeah. Do Donald Trump, as far as I could tell, was the only person uh, over the last month in the Republican Party that was right. really making this an issue other than maybe Jeff Sessions. So, again, if you want to have hundreds of thousands of Islamic uh, refugees in the United States, if you want to do that, ones that we can't vet, not proper immigration, but the ones we can't vet, then definitely vote for Hillary Clinton. But I think Europe is dealing with right. this situation now, and they realize they made a massive mistake in what they've done, but there's no turning back. Right. There's no turning back. I mean, they just arrested a Syrian who was on a massive <laughs> message uh, in Germany, a massive uh, stabbing spree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Uh, they opened up their hearts and they ended up stabbing in the back. Uh, Laura, right. let me just ask you: For you, the tape comes out Friday. I know you've been, no. you know, you've been yep. very stalwart in your support. What are your thoughts then? And what if another tape comes out and another tape comes out? Well, I know everything assuming, it's yeah. against, but what do you think? What does Laura Ingram think? Well, I, I said on Saturday at the Bakersfield Business Conference in front of a crowd of, I guess it was seven or 8,000 people, I said, you know, I was appalled. I was appalled and disgusted. Mm -hmm. But what I am more appalled and disgusted by as a political matter is the idea that we're going to sacrifice three seats on the Supreme Court and our ability to direct an independent country for the next four or eight years because of comments that were made years ago in a private setting by Donald Trump. Right. I'm sorry, but the, the, this is about the entire future of, of this country and, and extended out of the world. And, right. and, and now, now people are all on their high horse and saying, oh, well, I, I can't possibly do this. Then you might as well start you know, doing the phone banking for Hillary Clinton because you're, every day that you're not helping preach the gospel of the, of the uh, true capitalism and a strong, independent America, you might as well be working for Hillary because they do not break ranks. That, Hillary Clinton has basically lied to the public, lied to Congress on substantive national security matters regarding that private server. And the, not one Democrat has come out to criticize her. Not one. Now, why do you think amazing. that is? Because they love Hillary on that stuff? No, but they want to win because sure. they're about power and the Republicans are about pontificating. Yeah. All right, Mara Ingram, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. All right, she's going to go do her radio show and edit Life Set. All right. <laughs>